Hey guys, I'm going to do a review on the Glock 20. This is a Gen 3. Um, I bought this gun last year. Uh, I didn't see the sense in spending the um, extra money on a Gen 4 just to get the additional magazine and the, the uh, adjustable straps or interchangeable straps that you can change the back grip on. I like the way this gun feels. It is a 10 millimeter. I don't know if you're familiar with the 10 millimeter cartridge or not, but 10 millimeter has got a lot of power. Um, there is, a, and there's a whole lot of different ammunition you can get for this gun. Um, I've been shooting some of these TPU 10 millimeter hollow points out of their 180 grain bullet. Um, cycle very reliably I mean it's a Glock these things eat anything that you put up never had this gun so pipe jam of any kind now these PPUs I have noticed from shooting them they do have an issue with jacket separation but the lead core stays intact and they they mushroom them and I mean these things are just they're, they're, they're awesome little bullets I mean but they're then they're they're affordable I mean as far as 10 millimeter goes if you are familiar with it you know 10 millimeter ammunition is relatively expensive um, these are PMC bronze jacket of hollow points I think these are 170 grain bullet um, but they were expensive I think I paid $35 a box for those these P PPUs I paid I bought these when they were on sale in Midway I think I paid $20 for this box I bought two boxes of them. Now, I picked this up at a gun show a few weeks ago. Well, probably about a month and a half ago now. But this uh, this company is veteran-owned and operated, based out of Fayetteville, North Carolina. Um, I went out and shot them yesterday, and they they shoot okay. I mean, they're they're not. I mean, you're not going to win any competitions with them. Um, but I mean, I, I shot it at, I don't know, approximately 30 feet. And at 30 feet, I was able to put them all in a, in a four inch circle, which I mean, isn't bad. Um, but they're, they're a decent looking bullet. I mean, I, I, I mean, as far as a, a, uh, defensive situation goes, I mean, you hit something with a 10 millimeter, it basically lights out anyway. Um, they're not loaded overly hot I uh, went on their website and looked them up and they actually test fire them out of a Glock 20 and it says that they're pushing around 1150 feet per second out of this gun um, it is a full size so it's you know if you're a big guy like me you can you can conceal this gun depending on where you carry it I generally carry it in the small of my back I have an alien gear holster for this gun and the half the time my wife doesn't even know if I'm carrying or not she has to ask me so it is concealable Glock also makes a Glock 29 which is a subcompact so it's a smaller gun I, I think that will probably be my next purchase um, but if you're familiar with Glocks same thing they all come down the same now I'm having a hard time And like all Glocks, of course, the disc striker fires come down very easily, easy to take apart, clean. Not that you really have to do much to a Glock. A little bit of oil in the barrel just keep it from rusting, and that's about it. But uh, I mean, it, it's an awesome gun. Shoots very well. Of course, those all Glocks. It does come in tactical rail. They add laser lights, whatever you want to do. Trigger pull on a Glock is nowhere near as long as the Taurus, like I addressed in my last video. It is somewhat long. Um, but you can buy upgradable triggers and all that stuff for a Glock. I said in my last video that I didn't know or that Taurus was pretty much it is what it is, but I looked it up. And you can actually do upgradable up trigger jobs and stuff like that on a Taurus PT-111. 
I haven't looked at videos to see what the difference is on the length of pull, but uh, I'm sure, well, hopefully it, it does something to address that situation. Now, because this is a Gen 3, they only came with two magazines. But I bought a brand new factory Glock magazine at that same gun show. I think I paid $25 for it. But gun shoots well. 10 millimeter cartridge is, uh, a lot of people say that it's too much for self-defense because it is such a powerful cartridge that they do have issues with over penetration. But me personally, if I ever end up having to get into a gunfight with someone, I don't want them leaking out of one side. I want leaking out of both sides. Um, there is a company called uh, Liberty that makes a civil defense load for this gun, and it's a real lightweight bullet. I want to say it's only around 70 or 80 grains, and they boast that their guns or that their round out of this gun is pushing somewhere around 2,200 feet per second, and that is screaming. Um, the temporary cavities, I think they measured somewhere around 18. 18 to 20 inches across. I mean, they are just, they're massive. Um, but what they have over the RIP round is when they strike a hard surface, they act like a, a full metal jacket and they just hit, they, there's no expansion, there's no fragments or anything like that. No, no major fragments. The RIP rounds, when they hit a hard surface, the tabs break off. Uh, I watched a video not long ago. A guy had the Pelican case halfway across the room from where he was shooting his gun and he had those fragments stuck in that box. Me personally, I'll never purchase any of those. I'll never carry them just for the simple fact that if it does hit something else, I don't want to have to worry about collateral damage. Now, as far as in the home defense goes, I would not use this because it is a 10 millimeter. You're shooting through walls. I mean, basically anything you have inside the home is going to shoot through walls anyways, but I, don't, I have kids. I don't want to have to worry about you know, <clears throat> a 10 millimeter crashing through a wall and, and hitting my kid on the other side because <clears throat> because it is such a powerful cartridge. Depending on where you hit somebody, you're going to have to get them to the emergency room fast. But anyhow, generally speaking, for home defense, I use a shotgun and I use small shot. Um, generally, number six shot is about as, as, as big as I'll go. Because six is a number six shot at about ten feet is just devastating. Um, you don't have to take my word for it. Go out and shoot one, shoot a shotgun with number six is at about ten feet, and see your your load is only going to be a little bit bigger than a baseball, or about the size of a baseball, and you're going to shoot through basically anything. But ten millimeter Glock. If you're a larger guy, this this is a easily concealable gun for a larger person. You're not going to be five foot five and 120 pounds and be able to hide this gun easily because it it is a a big gun. Now, because it is a 10 millimeter, it's not a a slim frame. Glock went away from their their uh, SF design for some reason. Gen 3 was the last they made them. They quit making them for the Gen 4s. I wish they still made them, but they don't. But anyhow, it is a bigger gun. I mean, you can see I, I have I have fairly large hands, and I can grip this gun well. But somebody smaller, my wife, she does not like this gun because not only is it big, it's a 10 millimeter. It's got a lot of recoil. So anyhow, maybe um, maybe one day this week I'll go out and I'll, I'll fire a few of these things just so y'all can get a video and just to just to see what kind of recoil you're going to be dealing with from these guns. So anyhow, <clears throat> as far as a, a concealed carry gun goes, if you're big enough to conceal it, I recommend this gun. Um, if you're not big enough to conceal it, I would probably go with the 29, but I'm a 10 millimeter fan. 10 millimeter is a good cartridge. Uh, honestly, I think it's underappreciated. But anyhow, I uh, hope this video helps you out. If you're in the market thinking about a 10 millimeter, awesome gun. Bach makes good stuff anyway, so hopefully <coughs> this will uh, help you out if you're in the market. So anyhow, y'all take care.